Welcome back, AP Psych Brainiacs, to the wild and fascinating world of psychology, where we explore the mind's greatest mysteries, like why do we dream, why do we fall in love, and why do we always cry at those dog commercials? We're kicking off the next leg of our psychology journey with Unit 1 of AP Psychology, Biological Basis of Behavior, the unit where your brain takes center stage. Because every AP Psych student will eventually learn, everything psychological is simultaneously biological. This video covers topic 1.1, the interaction of heredity and environment, where we'll look at how genetics and experience team up to make you who you are, from your love of pineapple pizza to your irrational fear of birds. So if you're ready, grab your notes, fire up those neurons, let's jump in. I want you to think about these three icons, LeBron James, a generational athlete who defies gravity, Albert Einstein, a genius who rewrote the rules of physics, and Lady Gaga, a global superstar with talent, vision, and a voice that could melt diamonds. Here's the big question. Were they born like that, or did they become like that? This is the heart of one of psychology's oldest and biggest debates, nature versus nurture. Nature, or heredity, refers to the genetic traits and predispositions you inherit from your biological family. It's your biological blueprint the stuff built into your DNA from day one. Think of it as the starter pack you didn't get to choose. Some genetic traits are easy to spot, like eye color, hair texture, and height. Others, like personality, intelligence, and mental health, are way more complex, and not exactly something you can see in baby photos. You don't look at a newborn and say, yep, there's a future procrastinator with trust issues. Who's a future procrastinator? You are, yes you are, yes you are. Nature also influences your biological health. You can be genetically predisposed to all kinds of conditions, meaning your genes make you more likely to develop them. This includes diseases like diabetes, mental illnesses like schizophrenia, and yes, even baldness. But that raises a deeper question. Why would certain biological traits or even behaviors be passed down genetically in the first place? That's where the evolutionary perspective comes in, which we talked about in our last video. The evolutionary perspective in psychology looks at how behaviors and mental processes developed over time because they helped our ancestors survive and reproduce. Basically, if it helped you stay alive or find a mate, nature kept it around. Now, of course, genes and evolutionary history don't write the whole story. That brings us to the other side of the equation, nurture. Nurture refers to the environment, all the external stuff that helps shape you who you become. This includes your early child experiences, how you were raised, your social relationships, and yes, even what shows up on your social media feed. Even things that seem small, like the books read to you as a child, the music in your home, or how people responded to you when you cried or laughed. All of that helps shape your brain, your identity, and your view of the world. It's important to note, AP Psych students, that psychologists today don't really frame it as nature versus nurture anymore. It's not a battle, it's a collaboration. It's more accurate to say nature and nurture, working together in complex dynamic ways. Genes may set the stage, but the environment directs the show. This interaction is so important that there's even a term for how experience can influence gene expression, epigenetics. Epigenetics is a study of how the environment can turn genes on and off, like flipping a light switch based on your surroundings. For example, you might have the gene that makes you feel more stressed. But if you grow up in a calm, supportive environment, that gene might stay off and never get activated. So yeah, your DNA gives you the potential, but your environment decides when or if that potential gets expressed. That brings us to one last big question before we wrap up. How do psychologists actually figure out what's shaped by nature and what's shaped by nurture? To craft the code on nature and nurture, psychologists turn to some of the most revealing and honestly coolest research methods out there, twin and adoption studies. Why twins? Because they offer a unique opportunity to separate the effects of genetics from environment. Identical twins, also called monozygotic twins, share 100% of their genes. Fraternal twins or dizygotic twins share 50%, just like any other siblings. So if identical twins are way more similar than fraternal twins on a trait like impulsivity or anxiety, that's a big clue that genetics are playing a strong role. But psychologists don't stop there. They also study identical twins raised apart to better understand the interaction between nature and nurture. Now, just to be clear, these studies don't usually happen on purpose. Because intentionally separating twins for research, that's not just unethical, it's straight up supervillain origin story material. 
Also, good luck getting an IRB approval. But in rare cases, through adoption or the occasional real-life hospital mix-up, yes, that's happened, twins are raised in different households. And the results? Kind of mind-blowing. Even when raised apart in completely different environments, identical twins often end up with strikingly similar personalities, interests, habits, and even life paths. That's some of the strongest evidence we have for the power of heredity in shaping who we are. But at the same time, nurture can't be ignored. For example, if one identical twin develops depression after growing up in a stressful environment, while the other, raised in a more supportive setting, does not, that's a powerful reminder that environment matters too. All right, let's lock in with a quick recap. The nature-nurture debate explores how both genetics and life experiences interact to shape our behavior, personality, and development. Nature refers to our genetics, the biological blueprint you're born with. Nurture is your environment, everything from your childhood experiences to your culture to your TikTok algorithm. Today, psychologists agree it's not nature versus nurture, it's nature and nurture, working together in complex ways. That's where epigenetics comes in. And methods like twin studies, adoption studies, and family studies helps us understand how genes and environment interact to shape human behavior. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that next video. And as always, when in doubt, trust the data, not your gut. See you next time.